1974 had an extraordinarily strong field. Uh, Bobby Rowan was a candidate, uh, David Gambrell, George T. Smith, Bert Lance, uh, Lester Maddox, and George Busby. And you didn't have to be too much of a political strategist to know that uh, it was very likely that Governor Maddox was going to be the front runner and get into a runoff. And it was also fairly easy to analyze that if somebody got, whoever got the runoff with him was going to have a very good chance to win the runoff. So from the beginning, the strategy of George Busby was to uh, get the runoff, and as it turned out, that meant trying to get one vote more than Burt Lance. He got a few more than that, but not too many more. He got into second place with Governor Maddox and uh, won the runoff. It was a, um, uh, a hard-fought campaign. I think Busby benefited from his slogan in that campaign. Uh, this was not an original slogan. It came out of Texas, and I think the first time that I ever heard it was from uh, Sam Rayburn, but it was uh, had to do with a workhorse and not a uh, not a don't be a show horse, but be a workhorse. Busby took that, and it pretty much was his own idea. The, those of us who worked with him um, took it and went to uh, advertising agency and got it made into a campaign slogan. But it was pretty much Busby's own idea to um, have that as his slogan: elect a workhorse, not a show horse. And it was one of those times when uh, the slogan actually made a difference. It sort of fit him because that's what he was. He was a hardworking guy, was uh, very strong in what is now called the likability um, dynamic of politics. I'm not sure that word was applied to politics in those years, but George Busby's great strength was that he could make people like him, and uh, he was relatively um, uh, low in the financial uh, in political contributions raised that year, but he was very strong in the likability category. Legislators liked him, and in a lot of counties, um, the only person he knew in the county that would help him politically was a legislature, legislator. But they helped him a lot, and that's how he got into a runoff, and then he beat Governor Maddox on the runoff and became governor in uh, January of 1975. And you were there during the beginning of his administration? I was. And <clears throat> it was a, it was not like we had planned. Uh, he had a lot of things he wanted to do with education, but it turned out that he was in a deep, deep recession. And um, there was a supplemental budget that uh, Governor Carter had left. And uh, Governor Busby pretty much adopted the, the supplemental budget in January of the first year. And then it got to be June, and um, the budget going forward was not going to work, so we had to have a special session. And uh, Governor Busby was very upset about that because this was not what he was planning to do. But in a real show of leadership, he, as he says, bit the bullet called a special session and had to unappropriate uh, pay raises that had been planned for university professors. And he thought he was committing political suicide. He thought that he would never be able to sell this, that people would not like him. But he came across as so sincere and so committed to doing the right thing with his, what we call an austerity program. He became very, very popular for doing what appeared to be necessary with the budget and being conservative. And um, as it turned out, that thing that he thought was going to cost him all of his popularity uh, turned out to, to be the thing that made him popular. And uh, within a few months after that, there actually started to be talk about changing the Constitution to permit governors to run two terms, to serve two terms. That's an extraordinary thing when you think about uh, current politics, is here was a, a sitting governor, and they were talking about the possibility of changing the Constitution, been in the Constitution for many decades, the governor could only serve one term. The legislature changed it and let it apply to him. It passed overwhelmingly um, by the people in November. He ran again, and uh, since then, the eight-year possibilities existed for all governors. But that was due to, to one thing, and that was George Busby's ability to make people like him, 
even if they didn't quite agree with what he was doing in terms of policy. That's an extraordinary talent, and that was George Busby. And I think there's no denying that during his administration, he certainly was a workhorse. He worked very hard, and uh, I remember the first foreign meeting he ever had, it was with a person who was the uh, ambassador from Iran. Uh, he was a brother-in-law of the Shah of Iran. And Governor Busby had me to call Dean Russ and to get Dean Russ to give him some background, to tell him, what do I do in the presence of a person from another country? What, what do I call an ambassador? How do I have a toast? And uh, this was a meeting that took place at Callaway Gardens. It was the first foreign visitor that uh, George Busby ever entertained. And he was good at it. Um, this person's name was Zahedi, and Ambassador Zahedi liked George Busby, gave him a lot of confidence. The first thing you know, uh, he was doing the same thing with uh, Japanese. Uh, we were fortunate in that administration, and Governor Carter was elected president. And that caused almost every foreign group uh, that came to the country wanted to go to Carter's home state. So we got a lot of international visitors down here, and that gave Busby an audience. But it was George Busby who made them like him, and their, their feeling was, uh, this is a good man, so he must be from a good state. And he had a lot of success with getting them to uh, come here and build facilities and do economic development. He made it easier for them to conduct business by uh, working hard for international banking. He did. He changed um, changed the banking laws. I wish we could have changed it earlier and maybe all of the uh, uh, banks wouldn't be headquartered in North Carolina, but the uh, bank holding company law was amended during the Busby years. and um, uh, he, What he found out was an interesting thing that uh, he noticed that when prospects would come here from uh, another country or just another part of our country, the question they would always ask was, how, how long is it uh, from the Atlanta airport to this place that you're trying to sell me on? And Busby figured out that interstate highways were a, a very important thing. And uh, with working with Tom Moreland, we, we had real improvements in the interstate highway system. He figured out just from questions that people would ask that um, training of the workforce was a very important thing. So he, he got very interested in vocational education. And, uh, you know, Busby was doing firsthand research on what it was that people were interested in. And by staying governor for eight years, he was able to put a lot of that in. And there's no question that he legitimately can, I, I think, Call him could call himself then, and did call himself uh, the economic development governor, and particularly uh, with international economic development, that was what he was interested in, and made a huge difference. Uh, one of the things that Governor Busby um, had a lot of pride in was his ability to be a, a leader with the legislature. His lieutenant governor during his years was uh, Zell Miller, and the Speaker of the House was Tom Murphy, too forceful, strong, experienced personalities. And there were uh, a lot of differences in their uh, approach to budget items, and uh, they would sometimes have different positions on legislation. But George Busby showed a lot of quiet leadership ability in that uh, he was able to talk to uh, Speaker Murphy and Lieutenant Governor Miller and get these strong personalities ultimately to do what uh, appeared to be in the public interest and I always thought that was a, a real measure of his leadership ability was to get these um, strong personalities to see the need for compromise and uh, even after staking out uh, positions, get them to compromise uh, in the interest of getting a budget passed. And uh, that was, a I, I always thought, a tremendous uh, leadership demonstration by a quiet, but very effective um, governor, George Busby. And George Busby was uh, born in Dooley County in uh, Vienna, and um, when he was a very young child, his mother died, and the circumstances were such that it um, was not uh, workable for him to be raised by his father, 
and he was raised by an aunt and an uncle, and they lived to see him become governor. And uh, I think both the, this aunt and this uncle um, lived for um, some time into his first administration, and he was very, very proud of that. He was very thankful of them. His uncle was a mule trader, operated a mule barn in Vienna, and um, George Busby had a lot of uh, homespun wisdom, a lot of agrarian wisdom that uh, couldn't help but think uh, came from the mule barn, uh, either directly from his uncle or from his observation, but he grew up and um, one of the things that uh, was very influential in his life, when he was about 15 years old, somehow he got to take a uh, ride on a Cub airplane, and I think he went to Adel, and somebody took him up in a plane, and um, he would talk a lot about in later life about seeing that flat South Georgia from 2,000 feet, and it just changed his perspective and gave him a lifelong interest in flying, and um, he uh, flew all of his life. And uh, the, the day that he died, he uh, arrived at the Atlanta airport to fly, I mean, the Savannah airport to fly back to Atlanta in a single engine plane. So he never lost his love of flying that started when he was 15 years old with a flight uh, out of the Adel Airport. When George Busby was um, a child, 10, 12 years old, one of his jobs was delivering the newspaper in Vienna. And one of the people on his newspaper route was Senator Walter George, who lived in Vienna. And uh, Busby would tell me in later years about um, delivering the paper and he would walk into his either his house or his office and uh, sometimes Senator George would, would be reading these little western novels and he didn't like to, for the kids in town to see him reading these novels and he would kind of put them under his newspaper, put them behind his desk. But I think Busby saw what a respected figure Senator George was and how people in town liked him and, and I always thought he did. Uh, never quite said this, but um, I always inferred that seeing Senator George when he was a child and seeing how he was respected probably planted the seeds in his mind that um, I too would like to grow up and be somebody and maybe have a public career. The he, let's see, he came in there in uh, 51. Uh, well, I don't remember the year. When was it? he? He was there when Vanderbilt was there. Yeah, well, I was too. Yes, sir. I think you know he did. He sponsored that Sibley legislation, didn't he? Sibley Commission. Yeah, I remember that. So he was there back then. But I don't know how many years. I don't know what year he came in. I, I, Y'all were in the same same time though. I know that. So if you would just uh, tell us what you know about George Busby. Well, I met George Busby when I first went to the House of Representatives in the mid-50s. Uh, he, of course, uh, was from Albany, and I was from Richmond County. We got to be good friends. Uh, I recognized uh, immediately after serving in the House with him that he was very bright, hard worker, and had a good future in politics. When I got elected governor, of course, he had supported me uh, in my race against Marvin Griffin, and for that I was very grateful and appreciative. And so I, elect, I selected George Busby and Arthur Bolton as my floor leaders, and he and Arthur Bolton served in that capacity until Arthur became the Attorney General of Georgia, at which time he became the sole floor leader. Uh, when I finished my career as governor of Georgia. I then, of course, uh, had an opportunity to uh, work in the Busby campaign. He ran, I think, in 1974. Uh, he really, at that time, was a long shot. Uh, he came and talked to me, and I said, George, I don't know what opportunity that you have, but you were my floor leader. You supported me. I'm going to support you. I worked with him and I worked with, our, I allowed Norman Underwood, who was a young lawyer in my firm, to spend a good bit of time with him and uh, we worked all summer 
uh, for the election of George Bush. And fortunately, he got elected. He had a motto, I'm not a show horse, I'm a work horse, and he was able to convince the people of Georgia that uh, he meant what he said. Uh, he became governor uh, in, uh, what, 75, I guess, he ran in 74. He had a great uh, term, uh, eight years as governor. Uh, it was only during that eight-year period that he was the first governor of Georgia that got him to remove the constitutional prohibition against the governor immediately succeeding himself. The only mistake that I, and it was not a mistake, the only criticism that I ever heard uh, about George while he was governor was that uh, they put in a provision for pitching for the governors in the last four years of his term. He supported the pension for, for the governors of Georgia, and I told George, I said, George, when you get through being governor, you had a great career. You're going to be able to make as much money as you'll ever need, you and Mary Beth, uh, practicing law. Forget about the pension. If you're not careful, you're going to get criticized for it. But it finally passed, I think, and uh, George, of course, after he left the governor's office, he became a partner over at King and Spalding, made, made a lot of money as a lawyer, specialized in international relations with Japan, uh, was able to uh, gracefully retire from the practice of law after a matter of uh, eight or ten years spent the latter part of his life flying his Beach Baron aircraft, which he uh, and I both enjoyed uh, doing, fishing at his fish camp down on the coast, enjoying his grandchildren and his wife, and uh, went out of office with a good reputation, uh, maintained that reputation throughout the time that I knew him, all from the very beginning till his un timely death uh, when he was getting ready to fly back from Savannah from a fishing trip. Uh, George has a great family, a wonderful wife, uh, children, grandchildren. Uh, he, will, he left a, a good legacy, a very fine legacy as governor of Georgia, and I was proud at all times to be his friend and to have support.